Welcome to the Signal RGB Layouts tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a deeper look at layouts in Signal RGB. I'm going to go step by step and show you how we configured the layout on the setup we use for our videos. Before watching this tutorial, it's recommended that you watch the Signal RGB Quick Start Guide and the Components tutorial first. Layouts is an important system that gives you control over how lighting effects will flow through your entire setup. Since it's impossible for Signal RGB to know where all of your devices are physically located, you'll have to configure this manually. By default, all of the devices are scattered across the effect canvas like this. And so if you don't configure a layout, then the lighting effects will look unsynchronized and chaotic. Before you begin configuring your layout, there are some important concepts and settings to understand. This box represents a device. In this particular case, it's the element keyboard and it's labeled accordingly. Notice how it's positioned in the middle of this spiral effect. So it's capturing exactly this portion of the effect and displaying it on the keyboard. When I click and drag the box around, you can see how it's changing what's displayed on the keyboard in real time. The position can be fine-tuned using the X and Y sliders located here. The size of the box is very important and it can change the way an effect looks dramatically. In this example, the box is small and the rain effect appears massive on the keyboard. That's because the box is only capturing this tiny portion of the effect, so every raindrop covers a large portion of the keyboard as a result. When I increase the size using the slider located right here, you can see how it's capturing more of the effect which means the raindrops show up smaller on the keyboard. Rotation is also an important function located here that is usually used for things like correcting RGB fans that are mounted on their side. Watch how rotating the keyboard makes the rain move in different directions. If you want to reset the device to how it was when you first loaded Signal RGB, you can press the reset button located right here. And if you want to perfectly center a device, then you can press the center button next to it. The invert button will flip a device along the x-axis, so you can see how when I press it, the left side of the effect is now on the right side of the keyboard and vice versa. You can snap the devices onto the grid with this button. And you can right-click the button to bring up this box. It lets you change the size of the grid up to a maximum of 50. To save a layout, you can click on this save icon which will bring up this box where you can enter a name for the layout and press save. You can quickly swap between your layouts with this drop down menu. If you start making changes to a layout and you decide you want to undo them, then you can press the reload button which will reload the layout exactly as it was before you started changing it. Finally, you can delete a selected layout with the trash can button. Now that I've covered all of this, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is load up the side-to-side -side effect. This effect is perfect because it moves up, down, left, and right repeatedly. That's going to allow us to see how the lighting is flowing through the devices in every direction, and so we'll know if we're positioning everything correctly. I'll go step-by-step -step on configuring the PC tower first, and then I'll configure everything else on the desk. I recommend starting with all of the devices hidden, and unhiding them as you go. You can quickly hide all of them by alt-clicking this eyeball icon on any device. I'll start off with these four Thermaltake fans, so I'll go ahead and unhide them. By default, your devices may be on top of each other like this, so you'll want to drag them out. Selecting a device will make the physical device pulse blue, and that's how you'll know which one you're working with. The goal is to get your device's position to match the physical locations as close as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect. So to start off, I know that this fan is in the middle of the PC, so it's somewhere over here. Then these two fans are next to it like this. And finally, this fan is over here on the left. You might have noticed that the effect isn't flowing through the fans like it's supposed to. That means that we have to play around with rotation. You'll generally only ever need to rotate by 90 degree intervals until you get it looking like it's supposed to. In this situation, the fan in the back had to be rotated 270 degrees and the three fans at the top were rotated 90 degrees. Now you can see that the effect is flowing through those four fans like it's supposed to, which means we can move on. Next up is the motherboard I.O., which is right about here, and then the Corsair cooler sits next to it like this. Now I'm going to unhide all four RAM sticks and put them in the correct order by looking at which ones are pulsing blue when I select them, and then resize them so that they fit next to the cooler. Thank you. 
The effect is now flowing perfectly through the four fans, motherboard I.O., cooler, and rim. The graphics card is easy, it just goes underneath the cooler. Next, I'll unhide the three Li and Li fans and arrange them in the correct order. Then place them to the right of everything else like this. I also did some adjustments to the entire layout to make room for the next set of fans. The effect wasn't flowing correctly so I had to play around with rotation again. All three Li and Li fans had to be rotated by 270 degrees. The case strip sits to the right of the Li and Li fan so I rotated it by 90 degrees and made the scale larger. After watching the effect, I saw that the lighting was moving in the opposite direction on the strip. So I set the rotation to 270 degrees instead. So make sure while you configure your layout that you watch the effect move in both directions to verify everything is correct. Finally, I'll unhide the last three fans which are Corsair QL fans. The process is the same as everything you've seen so far. They need to be put in the correct order, and I also made the scale larger since the box was very small by default. Then I placed them at the bottom exactly as they are in the physical case. Because these fans are double-sided RGB fans, I mounted them upside down to pull air into the case, but that also means that I need to invert the fans over the x-axis, in addition to rotating them by 90 degrees. Now the layout for the PC tower is finally complete. The entire effect is flowing perfectly through all of the devices. Let's move on to configuring the layout for the devices that are on the desk. The goal is the same and that's to get your devices positioned to match the physical locations as close as possible. The keyboard is next to the mouse at the bottom of the desk, seated on top of the mouse pad. So that's exactly how I'll put these three devices on the layout. Notice how I'm scaling the devices. The mouse pad is larger than the keyboard and mouse because that's how it is in the physical setup. The speakers are at the top of the setup, so I'll place the box like this. And then the monitor sits in between the speakers. For this next part, I'm gonna hide everything except for the monitor. That way I can position the RGB strips that are on the back of it around the edge. This part is just like the RGB fans we did earlier. The strip needs to be put in the correct order and rotated accordingly. Now the desk layout is finished and the effect is flowing through all of the devices perfectly. An alternative desk layout is to position all of the devices onto the center of the canvas with a larger scale. This is the layout that we use for our game integration spotlights because it shows the effects really well, especially on the keyboard. This centered layout also looks great with almost every effect in Signal RGB. If you want to see a tutorial for setting up layouts that work well with our audio visualizers, I'll leave a link to that in the video description. This covers everything you'll need to know to create the perfect layouts in Signal RGB. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more helpful videos.